Oh, hey guys. Been a while, eh? Alright, so this is what's been going on. Um, I haven't had the energy or will to make a video, but I'm going to update you of all the events that happened. And here we go. This is all Christ related, my life living in St. Lucia. So, we start off with Crazy Jesus. Okay, Crazy Jesus used to be a Jesus Christ, which is high up there. Turned out, he breached into Christianity to become a Jesus Christ, then takes secrets and sells them to bad guys somewhere. Or he just learns them himself. I don't know which. I'm assuming he sells them. I mean, why, why, why wouldn't you? And it's all about money there too, if you want it to be. Now, unless you, if you can't create things by yourself, if you can't create things by yourself, then you're at work doing a job, and that's the way it is. I can make another video about it later if you if you want. Um, so he was in jail, and he got up. And that pissed me off. So he's floating around. He's in my dreams every night. And it's pissing me off really bad. I mean, he's in my dreams raping me, basically. He'll show up as a girl. I start having sex with her. I wake up and it's him in my face. Nice, eh? Yep. So he knows he knows the secret of how to become someone else. Someone I know. Ex-girlfriend. He'll be my ex-girlfriend in the dream. And I'm totally comfortable with it. I don't feel it. There's a, sometimes there is a different feeling. And I can identify that that's not her. And sometimes there ain't. Depends on me, I guess. Or how good he's doing it. Or how good he's doing the interpretation. Or I'm actually hooking up to my girlfriend. Hooking up to her. Feeling her. Spiritually. And seeing him, and he is doing it. So that's driving me nuts. I woke up um, three uh, three times in a row. I woke up in the morning, whatever, and I had a knife stuck in my back with no holes. So he comes to me in the illusion, open. Opens a uh, porthole in me. I guess it's a porthole. That's how he does it. I don't know for sure. He comes at me, puts it inside of me, right between my my uh, shoulder blades. And now, when you lift your shoulder blades up, what happens? As soon as you get up out of bed, what happens? You close your shoulders. Well, the knife is like that between my shoulders. My shoulders go. <laughs> Blood leaks out. And I get this brutal headache. It's just cataplectic, man. You just out. Nurse goes in. They rush me to the hospital because I know I can identify the energy. The nurse takes the knife out. The energy. She, she stitches up the holes, and the energy stops. And I'm okay to go. That happened three times. Okay, this is eleven. So he got shit for that. He got. Um, He's up to 160 years now in prison, but he's out walking around. I don't understand. Now, he can out walk around in the illusion, which means he goes to bed. He lays down and meditates in the jail cell, and he goes into the illusion, and he can do things. We didn't know if he was sticking the knives in me or someone else was. Now, from what I understand... You can't, you can create an illusion, but you can't stick things in people. I don't know how it works totally, guys. So, and I don't go to him. He's in jail. I don't want to know. Go away. Bye-bye. I just wake up with knives stuck in me. Turns out there were six people working for him. Six new ones. Six new people. They would come down underneath me from the illusion and put the knife in my shoulder blades. I woke up one morning, 
I had a, a knife stuck in my testicles. I found it. Didn't puncture anything. If it did, there was no energy. No energy like coming through my head. So the nurse took that out, stitched it up. But I found it. It was verified. This is all being recorded by Christ, by the way. I'm not like, why is he out running around? How can he, how, why is he protecting me? Why aren't you protecting me, right? Because I bring in Christ every night. But he can't, he can't see in the illusion, or this one can't, right? I, I went through like four Christ this month doing different things. And none of them can do all what they need to do. So when I go to sleep at night, he knows, crazy G, crazy, crazy man, knows I go to sleep. What time I do, because I have a schedule in my daily life here. So he knows, because he used to own me as a Jesus Christ. So he knows my routine. You say change your routine, or I can't change my routine around. I'm, I'm on a routine, man. It's, you know, got to do what you got to do. So basically, not down by the hour, but he knows when I'm up and when I'm up. Now... This one was bad. For some reason he was really pissed off. I woke up. I was sleeping. I was having a dream. And I was tied to an apple tree around my neck, a dog chain. Tied to my apple tied to an apple tree in my old house here in Chatham. And uh, where I lived growing up as a kid. I was tied to the backyard apple tree and I was on my hands and knees. And somebody was beating me in the fucking head with a, a whip, a whip or a stick or something. And he was yelling at me, just beat me, beat me, beat me. And that's, that was the whole dream. And then he let me go and I woke up. I, I'm crawling back to my wife and kids. And Jesus, they all freaked out. Because now what happens is when I go into a dream or when I fall asleep here, my soul takes off in the illusion. They don't know where I am. They're looking now. They're looking at me physically, and they're looking at my soul, laying in bed. When they, when they're dead, okay, they're dead. They're in St. Lucian. Now, when they go to sleep, they're laying there, and all of a sudden they be laying there, and all of a sudden they'll disappear. They're in the illusion. They're dreaming, and all of a sudden they'll, they'll appear back in your bed. They'll just disappear. You'll be sitting there, watching, and all of a sudden. The person will disappear. That person just left in the illusion. Now, when they wake up, bing, they appear back in St. Lucian in their home. Dead people. That's how they do it. When I disappear, my soul disappears. My soul is still connected by the heart light in my body. But they only see my body. They see my heart light. But they don't know where my soul is gallivanting around the universe. So, what happens is, they sit there and wait till I come back. And I came back, and my head was ripped open in blood. Just, I was covered in blood. My skull was ripped open. All my face, half my face was ripped open. Half my skull was ripped open. Meat hanging everywhere. My wife started crying. Grace grabbed me. And kids started crying. And they all brought me to the hospital. Didn't hurt worth a shit didn't hurt. I'm not, I mean, there was some thick energy, but it didn't hurt like that knife in your back. The knife between your shoulder blades, that hurts. Oh, man, does it hurt. So, it took me a day to heal up from that, laying in bed. And you can feel it. You can feel the lines, like, physically. It was weird, man. But it didn't hurt. It was shit. So whatever he used, he wasn't penetrating my skull. Like, he wasn't breaching my flesh. So that was pretty good. I got no... The only thing I got was a scar here. Just a little, like a, like a paper cut. A little bit of blood comes out. That's the only thing I got that I found. And it's healed up and gone. Um, you know how you get the ghost scratches, the three marks of the ghost scratches? Well, I got one on my chest. And that was that. Um, day before, and I was wondering why. 
Now, Chris didn't tell me this. So I woke up with all these, my brain whipped off. Now, the skins that got, were cut and whipped and smashed and blood leaking out, it was all ethereal skins, soul skins, okay? Now, if you're a dead person, and I'm a dead person, I walk up to you and I grab your skin. I can grab your skin like this, and I can rip it off, okay? I can rip your skin off. I've done it many times. I grab you, I dig in, and rip. I can rip your skin right off. Well, that's what he was doing to me with the whip. So when I say skin, he whipped my skin. He whipped not my flesh skin, the ethereal skins, okay? And ethereal skins are just it's a long thing. Anyway, I can get into it, but I'm just telling you the accounts of what happened here. So I was laying there and I'm talking to Jesus, and he goes, You know why he did that, don't you? And I go, no, because there was no reason, like, I never did anything to him. Uh, he stuck the knife in my back three or four times, and my balls. And I go, well, I don't know why he did that, right? I, I hate this. I hate it, but I'm just talking normal. I want to kill this guy, but I don't want to start more violence. Because once you get that violence to a goal, you're going around in circles. I attack you, he attacks me. I attack, I, I got to get up, I got to go do things. I gotta live my life here on earth. But see, I'm hampered by that because I only get dream state in dreams. I can hear a little bit now what's going on. I have to close real quiet and listen. And I can barely make out what's going on. But when I'm dreaming, when I leave in the illusion, he he can find me. Christ can't find me. I don't know why. Pissing me off. So I'm still, I'm, I'm always playing catch up. I never know what's going on. Grace comes and tells me he got uh, a bunch of citizens from St. Lucian, people that don't like him, came and beat the living hell out of him. The day before he did this to me. And I go, well that explains it. Now Grace wants to know, was it me and my people? I'm going, what was it? Listen to me. I don't have no people. What? My kids and my wife? I go, I got fans out there. I got people who are watching the news, watching everything that happens to me. I go, maybe they did it. And he goes, that's what I think. And I want to go, why? You? And he goes, well, this is why that you got attacked and beaten and whipped. And, um, and I go, when did that happen? And he goes, before he got you. So the day before... He got beat up by a bunch of vigilantes. Right on, guys. Thank you. More of the same. I'm talking to you or whoever. I don't know. Right on. And, uh, kick his ass. I, he came back and kicked my ass in response. But I didn't even know about it until way after the fact. Yeah. So I'm caught in this 22, right? I'm caught in this, you know. He can get me every time I fall asleep, sort of thing. When I leave, when I fall asleep, like Christ is sitting there looking at me. As soon as I fall asleep, I disappear. Now, they can tie me down, but I don't like being tied down. And, and I've been tied down for months. But still, I'm laying in my own bed, tied down. The guy comes up from the illusion underneath. Underneath St. Illusion, which is another reality they created just like our reality but you come underneath that reality where you are stick the knife in you and that's what they do I wake up laying in bed oh, unbelievable stuff man you wouldn't even believe it all right that's what they're doing so um why told me so I wake up one day, he's screaming, yelling, going nuts. Now there's another guy who's like an instigator. And he lives in St. Lucian, but he lives higher up. I think he does. Yeah, he's always been there for months. And he just, you know, chirps at me, you know, like, 
Like, um, I say something to my kid, go like that, and he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And I hear a comment, a smart-ass comment. And that's what he does, he just makes smart-ass comments all the time. And I ask Jesus, I go, who the fuck's making all the smart-ass comments? This is getting pretty annoying. And he goes, yeah, I know, I'm going to go have a little chat with him. He never stopped. So, this guy's making all these fucking comments all the time. And crazy Jesus. He's in the illusion, and he's yelling at us. We can hear him yelling at us. And I'm thinking he's out of jail, but he's not. He's in jail, but when he goes to the illusion, you can't do nothing. I mean, he's not convicted yet on the big Supreme Court. I don't know when the fuck that's going to happen. We're going to better be soon. He is in the illusion, floating around, yelling at me, right? And he's yelling at my wife and kids and they get sick of it he says something my wife just says fuck that's it she slams the door she starts packing up everything and they moved now they already had another place and they moved to a place called queen city queen city and it's a great big house we we're gonna buy it we still might it's a great big house out by the ocean but it's old and it's breezy she goes it's breezy in here it means there's a breeze from the outside ocean coming in. They want it fixed up before they buy it. So anyway, we went there. The people that own the place came. And I met them and everything and blah, blah, blah. So I'm, I'm laying in there sleeping. And uh, that's where I am. So I spent a couple days in there. Let me see what happened next. Yeah, and I was there packing, and I was getting ready to leave. The guy that's always making the comments, he was chirping at me. And I'm leaving uh, where I have my car place. And my buddy, Jesus Christ, he's work, he, he's my buddy. But he don't get involved in my shit. Because he has a daughter to protect, and he just sort of stays out of it. And he don't live there either. He lives somewhere else. But he comes in takes care of property, everything I create, he makes it work, and we make a lot of good cash, a lot. So, my wife's moving, the kids are moving, Jesus picks me up and he's taking me away to the place, and the guy said something really got, really, really bad, the chirping guy, he said, motherfucker, see you later, you jerk, you can't fucking do nothing. Uh, figures I told you you move. I don't think he liked me living where I was living. I don't know why, whatever. He chirped at me. And I, I said, fuck this. I've been listening to this guy for three months chirping at me. I didn't say a goddamn thing. So I walked up to him. I went over to him. And, um, I don't know, I think I punched him in the face. I go, yeah, I may be leaving. You'll remember this. Pow! I punched him in the face. I took out a freeze card, no, fire card. I took out a fire card, and I threw it at him, and I hit him, and he burst into flames, and he's running around, I'm on fire, I'm on fire, I'm on fire. <laughs> and then I took out a freeze card, and I threw it at him, and he, he froze, and he couldn't move. So he's on fire, he couldn't move, and he's, gonna, he's talking. And I go, what you, what do you got to say now, you son of a bitch? It's all this stuff. Jesus Christ grabs me. More Jesus has come, find out what happened. And I go, say something now, say something now. Like, oh, I was mad. Anyway, he said he was pressing charges. He never did. I guess Jesus talked him out of it. Um, I heard him a couple more times, but I think he learned his lesson. He, he ain't bothered me since. So, the only reason I did it, Jesus knows, because he's been there with me. I've been listening to this guy for months and I haven't done a goddamn thing. And so I popped him one. Anyway, whatever. Who cares? Oh, so we moved to this thing. Moved to this town. I'm in there now. I was supposed to be protected. This is totally Christ controlled little city. Totally Christ controlled. I'm not at all my guns. Bye bye. All my knives, bye bye. Nobody has guns. Only this one Christ has guns. Has. There's nothing. You can't do nothing. You just sit around and walk and smell flowers all day. That's all you do. And so they stuck me there. I'm fine with it. 
this crazy, crazy guy, ex Christ, he got his Chris, Christ, Christ stuff taken away. He got it all. He got that taken away. He got his. He ain't even a Jesus anymore. He's not, he's not a Jesus, and he's not a Jesus Christ. He's just a guy now, some guy. Anyway, so I'm there, and he's still coming in my dreams, seeing me in my dreams. The crazy guy. Jesus can't do anything about it. And the first night I went to bed there, I said, "Does this place got a hospital?" And Chris goes, yeah. He goes, well, get it warmed up because I'll be there in the morning. <laughs> this is right after my knife attacks, like three of my knife attacks and in my nuts. And um, he goes, no. I go, he's going to get me an illusion. He puts, the, you know, we all told Chris the story. One Chris told the other Chris the story. And we're all going to get him wrong. We're all, he's going to get stuff put in him. Not here, not here, never gonna happen. I wake up in the morning with a knife sticking in my shoulder blades. I go to the hospital, the nurse takes it out, stitches it. She's like, she's like, she never gets anybody in this place. She's working, she's like there all the time. She hands out aspirin and shit. She never had a real, real problem. <laughs> so she was kind of freaking out. She didn't know what to do, so she had to go get help and everything. Um. And the poor girl, I put her through hell. I didn't put her through hell verbally, but all my problems. So anyway, this girl's there. <sighs> a whole oh man. Um. So, I'm living in Queen City now. Crazy man accused me of all this stuff I didn't do. Make it out that I'm the bad guy instead of him. And the court's got to make a ruling, but the courts can't decide. And Jesus can't figure out if I'm... So what they did was they put me in this in this city specifically isolated. And they watched me. They had a camera on me. My wife's and kids were there, and Jesus was there. For like fucking eight hours while I slept. To make sure nothing happened. I woke up with a knife in my back. That happened. Three times I woke up with a knife in my back. And one of my balls. So, Jesus freaked out. He can't believe he got chumped by this other guy. This crazy guy. He was actually crying, upset. He he felt upset. Because I was supposed to be there, go there to be protected. And they had cameras and they were all watching me. And it still happened to me. <sighs> so, the only thing they think... So I went back to St. Lucian after four days... I went back to St. Lucian to sleep, and my wife came with me and everything. And I'm laying there, and the kids that were sticking the knife in my back were looking for me. Okay, they were looking for me. And they were up above, and they swing down low, and they were scooting around the illusion. And I'm like, Jesus, I go, why? I go, I see the fucking kids, that are, there's two of them. Two or three of them, and there's these are the people that are sticking the knife in me, and it's like midnight now. It's like midnight here, and um, I'm laying there, and I can see him. I'm watching him. One's sneaking up on me. He's coming right at me right now. I'm looking him right in the eye, and he goes, "Let me in." So Jesus comes in, into me, goes into my head, into my soul, and he goes. He goes, let's see the fucker. He goes, I go, well, get him. He's the one who's been doing it. Bust his ass. Chris leaves. Whop, comes up underneath him, grabs him, takes him to fucking heaven. Does that with, I do that with two other people. Chris then calls the troops or whatever they are, the, the police. And these guys are, look, it's like SWAT, man. Just like SWAT. You don't believe it. But they got leather, leather, uh, instead of a Kevlar thing, they got leather, black leather. And they got, they got dundles and everything, man. Jesus Christ. Look like SWAT. So, and then, um, these SWAT guys surround me in the illusion, and they're black. 
They're all dressed in black and they just sit in the blackness of the illusion. Watching me to catch a guy all night. That's what they did. They caught three more to cut. Three more. I caught, I, 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 I did three. I eyeballed three. They went and got them. They caught three more. Sitting in the illusion, waiting. All in one night. And I'm like, no more knife attacks. We got them all. All my knife attacks are gone. I wake up with no energy. Painful energy. I mean, this is like, the energy hurts so bad, you just sit there and fucking tears run out of your eyes. That hurts. Advil don't work. It cuts the pain a little bit, but not really. Anyway, this is the end of video one, and that's where I'm at. We caught the bad six guys that were sticking knives in me. Without no holes, they just walk up to you and put the knife inside you. They put their hand inside you, create the knife really solid, and let it go. Pull their hand out, and they're in the illusion. Well, then this thing manifests inside the soul, in your, in your ethereal skins and everything, and you puncture it. Blood leaks out, the ethereal blood plasma stuff, and it goes through your head, and it's like shards of ice, billions of shards of ice, like ice cold, and it rings your head, and it hurts so bad, you can believe it. Which is probably half the society's migraine headaches. I don't know. But anyway, it hurts. So that's over. Next video, I'll tell you the rest of that.